how many love the word of God? Hallelujah. How many have heard the voice of God, the leading of God, the help of God? There's nothing like it. Amen. And that's actually what we're talking about in this month. In the month of October, we're talking about teaching along the lines of hearing. Our sermon series for the month of October, the month of October is hearing, hearing, praise God. And actually, this is part two of our sermon series entitled hearing. Let's define the word hearing. The word hearing means to give ear. It means to give one's attention to a sound. It means attending to what is said. And it means observing and obeying what is spoken, what is spoken. The word hearing means to give ear, to give one's attention to a sound, attending to what is said, and observing and obeying what is spoken. The goal of this sermon series is fivefold. Are you ready to hear all five points here? Number one is to learn how to hear from God. Number two, it's to expect to hear from God. We can expect to hear from God. Number three, it's to follow God's voice to fulfill his plan for your life. Number four is to develop an ear to hear from the Holy Spirit. And number five is to equip us as a church, you as a believer, to succeed for the rest of your life by getting acquainted with the voice of our Father God. Amen. Are you ready this morning? Again, this is part two of our sermon series entitled, Hearing. In part one, we, answered, we asked the question, and we answered the question, is God speaking today? Is God speaking today? And we answered that with two verses of scripture, one in the Old Testament and one in the New. I want us to turn in our Bibles to these two references just real quickly this morning, and then we're going to hop right into part two of this series on hearing. Is God speaking today? 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. As you turn there, I want to say, I want to answer the question. The answer is emphatically yes. Emphatically yes. Is God speaking today? Absolutely, he is speaking today. And we saw this to be true in 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10 says... And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, saying, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered and said, then Samuel answered and said, speak for thy servant heareth. Speak for thy servant heareth. Is God speaking today according to the Old Testament scripture here? Emphatically, yes. Samuel heard the voice of God. And he said, speak, I'm listening. Thy servant is listening and hearing what you want to say. Then we saw this to be true in the New Testament in the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. Let's turn there in our Bibles. The Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. And these are the words of Jesus. Is God speaking today? John chapter 10 and verse 27. Now, I'm a, I'm a preacher that likes to hear... The congregation say amen, praise the Lord. It helps me, praise God, amen. You'll notice that I'll just get more free and free. I might be running up and down the way here in a little bit. Praise God, amen. I get excited, I get passionate, praise the Lord. Amen, that's a disclaimer, that's just preparing you, praise the Lord. Is God speaking today? The answer is emphatically yes. First, first Samuel 3.10 says, Samuel heard the voice of the Lord and said, speak for thy servant heareth. Then here in John chapter 10 and verse 27, these are the words of Jesus. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. Come on, let's say that together. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Is God speaking? Yes. Is he speaking today? Yes. Hallelujah. Now, the question in part two that we must answer is how is God speaking today? God is speaking today. We can see that to be scripturally so. But how is God speaking today? Is anyone interested in that? How is God speaking today? 
Well, let's begin to answer that question. Turn to Hebrews chapter 1 with me. Hebrews chapter 1. And we'll read verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Hebrews, the first chapter, and verses 1 and 2. How is God speaking today? Are you following me this morning? How is God speaking today? Because God is speaking, we must answer the question, how is he speaking? Is there any, any, anyone interested in listening? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 1 begins to answer this question. The scripture says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God who at sundry, that's a, that's a word we're not using in our modern day vernacular, which simply means God who at various times or God who at numerous, numerous times or several times and in diverse and in diverse manners, various manners, he spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now notice this church, how is God speaking today? Verse 2, the first part of verse 2 answers that question. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his, hath spoken unto us, come on, say me, hath spoken unto you and I, in these last days by who? By his son, by Jesus. How is God speaking today? The first answer to that question is God is speaking today by his son, Jesus Christ. Now let's break that down a little bit further because right now that's an answer, but it's a little bit vague. Let's discover something about Jesus and one of his titles. One of his titles, if you'll turn with, turn with me to the Gospel of John, the first chapter, John chapter 1, praise the Lord. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now go down to the 14th verse. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. One of the titles that Jesus carries or is known as is he is the word. He is the word. He is the word. So when the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 that God has spoken unto you and I in these last days by his son, we could say this, God has spoken unto you and I in these last days by his word. By his word. Well, what's the word? The word's the Bible. Isn't that simplistic? The word's the Bible. The Bible's the word of God. Or we could say this, the Bible is God speaking to you. Now, turn to your neighbor and say that. Sometimes that's a lot easier to say it that way. Say the Bible is God speaking to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do we have any preachers in the pews this morning? Come on, this is a good opportunity to preach to your wife. Preach to your husband. Amen. Amen. Preach to your neighbor. Say it one more time. Say, the Bible is God speaking to me. Now turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the Bible is God speaking to you. Isn't that a lot easier to say it that way? Praise the Lord. Amen. No, I'm thankful the Bible is God speaking to me. I'm thankful the Bible is God speaking to you. Is God speaking today? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. But how is God speaking today? God in these last days has spoken unto you and I by his son, and his son is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the, and the word was God. And the word became flesh. The word is a person. The Bible is a living person. 
His name's Jesus. Praise the Lord. From Genesis to Revelation, there's a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just solidify that statement with the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, Jesus is seen in the fiery furnace. There's three Hebrew boys, he, three Hebrew slaves, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Can I get anybody to say amen this morning? We're rolling a little bit now, amen? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But even a person that didn't know God by the name of King Nebuchadnezzar, he looked into the fiery furnace, which had been heated up seven times higher than it normally was. And he saw a fourth man in the fire. And he said, the fourth man, he's like the son of man. He's like the son of God. King Nebuchadnezzar saw Jesus, guys. King Nebuchadnezzar saw Jesus, and it was Jesus that was protecting, and it was Jesus that was sustaining. It was Jesus that was causing a situation of destruction to not even touch their lives. Jesus Christ, I have good news for you today. Your Bible reads, my Bible reads, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That simply means this, Jesus Christ, as he was in recent past, he's the same right now. And Jesus Christ, he's the same and will be the same in our tomorrow. God is faithful, church. God is good, church. He's not changed. Amen. I change, you change. But God in his goodness and his grace and his mercy will not change. There's one thing God will not do. He will not change. Paul, speaking to the church at Rome, said this, the gifts and callings of God are without change. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a desire for someone in your life, but they didn't meet the conditions, and they wasted your time? Your plan probably changed. Can you say amen to that? Our plans changed based upon conditions, but God does not change, amen. God is patient. God is long-suffering. God is faithful. God is good. He'll never change his mind about what he has in store for you, and what he has in store for you is absolutely good. The scripture says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, thoughts of prosperity, and not of evil. I have have a plan for your life, and that plan will not and cannot ever change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, thank God. He's the same right now, Sunday, October 20th, 2019, and he'll be the same tomorrow, Monday, October 21st, 2019. He will remain the same. He's good. He's faithful. He loves you. He's for you. His thoughts that he thinks towards you are thoughts of peace and prosperity. He has a great plan for your life, and it will never change. My desire and my plan might change for your life, but God's plan will never change. Amen. So if he brought supernatural protection in a fiery furnace, and the scripture says they didn't even smell like a fiery furnace when they came out. Have you ever been around a bonfire? Everybody knows you've been around that bonfire. But when God gets involved in your life and in your situation, he's able to protect you in such a way and sustain you in such a way that the challenge and the destruction that came at your doorstep, it won't even be recognized as though it was there. God can do such a work in your life that the challenges and the trauma and the tragedy you faced in your life and you've experienced in your past, they won't even, they won't even, they won't even be like they were there. That's the God you serve. That's the God you live for. That's the God that I'm preaching about right now. My wife began to exhort at the end of worship, Jesus Christ is the, she began to say, Jesus Christ is the reason for our praise and our shouting and our freedom and our laughter. Why? Because because he's the only one that can change and heal the brokenhearted. Have you ever been brokenhearted? Have you ever went through something where you were disappointed and frustrated and hopeless because of it? Jesus Christ is the only one that can bring change right there. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. God hath spoken unto us in these last days by his Son. 
and his son. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and the word became a person. It became flesh, praise God, and it dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the splendor, the beauty, the wonder of the word of God, Jesus Christ, and he's full of grace and truth. He's not full of condemnation. He's not full of guilt and regret. He's here to help you. He's here to hail you. He's here to save you. He's here to deliver you. He's not full of you blew it, you missed it. He's full of it's okay. I resolved it. It's going to be all right, praise God. We can move forward in life life we can move forward in life we can move forward in life you can move forward in life you don't have to remain stuck you don't have to remain complacent you don't have to stay in that trauma you don't have to stay and I be identified by that tragedy Jesus Christ is the word and God has spoken to you today by his son Jesus is G is God speaking today emphatically yes and the first answer is he's speaking to us by his word do you need a word from God? It's right in your hands. Hallelujah for the word. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the truth. And the truth has one objective. is to bring freedom to our lives. God is speaking to us today by his son through his word. The Bible is God speaking to you. You can open up this Bible, praise the Lord, and you can hear the voice of heaven. You can open up this word, this living word, and hear the voice of your father. I remember when I got saved at 19 years of, old, 19 years of age, I began to, well, the first thing I did is I, I went and bought a Bible. Glory. $60. Leather. I was raised in church, but I didn't know nothing about the word. I mean, I did, but you know what I mean, I didn't. But I began to say, I'm going to read the word. And I had been given a Bible for graduation, and I had been given a Bible for different, different things that happened in my life. But I just had it in my heart, I'm going to go get my own Bible. And I went to the Bible bookstore, and I said, well, King James Version, that's new King James Version. It takes all the these and the thous out. It doesn't change the translation. I'm going to buy that Bible. I got to the counter and I heard $60, $70. I thought it was going to be $20, $10-15. I didn't pay attention, like I said, to the leather. It was leather bound. But I began to read the Gospel of Matthew. I thought this is a good place to start. The Gospel of Matthew. And I didn't know. That by reading the word, I was hearing from, from God. I might have known that just on the inside, but I didn't know it in regards to so I could teach that to you. But I began to read Matthew. And I got to the 10th chapter. And I got down to the 39th verse. And God spoke to me. And there's nothing like hearing God for yourself. Like Samuel heard God. I heard God. This is what I heard. It wasn't an audible voice. It was thoughts. And these thoughts created a sentence. And it said this. It said, Michael, for 19 years of your life, you've lived for you. And you've been disappointed. And you're just 19. But in 19 years, you're disappointed. He said, Michael, I give you the opportunity for the rest of your life. To be satisfied. Let me quote you the scripture. And then you, you judge it. To see if this scripture agrees with that thought. The scripture read this. It was Jesus that spoke the words. It says, he that finds his life shall lose it. But he or she that loses their life for me shall find it. 
And this is the best way I can describe it. This thought came off the pages and came right into my heart. And it answered why I failed, but it answered how I could succeed. Watch this. It brought conclusion to disappointment. It put a period at the end of that disappointment, and it healed me. And now it pointed me. Now the rest of your life, if you'll live for me, I'll satisfy you. This is not a history book. This is inspired from the Holy Ghost. It's alive. And when you read the written word, the living word will come alive to you. Hallelujah. How is God speaking unto us? By his word. Number one. Number two. How is God speaking today? Are you here today? How is God speaking today? By his spirit. By his spirit. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and 16. Number two, how is God speaking today? By his spirit. Watch this, church. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How many sons and daughters are in this place this morning? Amen. Well, basically, the Scripture is saying this. We can expect to be led by the Spirit of God. As sons and daughters, we're led by the Holy Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Again, as sons and daughters, we can expect to be led by the Holy Spirit. Sons of God, daughters of God, should expect to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, that word led refers to guidance, direction. That connects to hearing. If I was to give you direction, if you pulled into this parking lot and said, where's the post office at? Well, I would do my best to lead you, to guide you, and to direct you to Northgate Mall. And behind the mall is the post office there. As children of God, God leads you by his spirit. God leads you by his spirit. Now, let me make this statement that one of my mentors in the Lord made concerning this reality. Many times the church is looking for the spectacular and they miss the supernatural. Many times the church is looking for an angelic visitation for direction or something spectacular or if a bird flies by at 12 noon right now, I know the decision I'm to make. Let me ask you this question, or really, let me make this statement. Jesus paid too high a price for you to hear from God based upon a bird flying, at, flying by at 12 noon, whether you should buy the house or not. Are you here? For as many as are directed, guided, or led by the Spirit of God, they're sons and daughters. That again, and I know I'm being redundant, that simply means as a child of God, you need to know, I need to know, that God will lead you and guide you by his Spirit. Now, the way he leads us, the greatest way he leads us, is by an inward witness. An inward witness, an inward intuition, an inward knowing. 
call me in, son. Not here, but here. In your heart. Now, we'll qualify that with verse 16. Let's read verse 16. Romans 8, 16 says, For the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, King James Version says itself, which really means himself. The Holy Spirit himself, watch this church, he bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I'll submit this thought to you. If he bears witness with your heart that you belong to God, then we can conclude, and I'll give other scripture to validate what I'm about to say. We could conclude that God leads us or bears witness on the inside of us in regards to decisions we're going to make. The number one way that God leads his body is by his spirit through an inward witness. Through an inward witness. Praise the Lord. Now, let's back that up with the Bible here. Go to Proverbs chapter 20. Are you here this morning? Now, that's not spectacular, but it's supernatural. Remember, I said many times people are looking for the spectacular and they miss out on the supernatural. You know, God makes living for him so simple, it takes a guy like me to confuse us. This is not rocket science. It's profound, it's powerful, but it's not hard to follow God. It's not hard to hear from God. Proverbs 20, 27 says this. Praise the Lord. Watch this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That simply means this. If we just take the scripture for what it's saying, the candle would bring light. The candle would bring direction. We could say this, the spirit of man is the flashlight of the Lord. Now, before we had flashlights, before we had smartphones with the, I'm thankful for my smartphone. I can, I got a strong flashlight on the back of that smartphone. We've been moving, moving things into storage and it gets dark, praise the Lord. And before those lights turn on in the storage, I hit that flashlight. And I'm looking in that storage locker. Where's that at? The light gives me direction. The light gives me, oh yeah, it's right there. The light gives me answers. Now, before the smartphone, before a flashlight, before electricity, when this was written, what they have, I've only seen it by movie. Come on, talk to me. Are you here this morning? They're walking through the house with a candle. Your spirit is the candle of the Lord. Your heart is where God's going to bear witness with you. He's going to lead you by a witness, an inward witness. In other words, I have a big decision to make. I've submitted it to the Lord. Me and my wife have prayed about it. And this just seems good. I need to go in this direction. I didn't have a dream. I didn't have an angelic visitation. I didn't say, God, I want the bird to fly by at 12 noon. It just seemed good to me. I acknowledged God in this way. I acknowledged God in this, in this, in this, in this decision. And it just seems good to make this decision. That's the number one way God will lead you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Many of you, let's put it this way because we're all in this setting, many of you attend this church because it seems good. Praise the Lord. 
Sister Kathy, can I put you on the spot? She said, yes, yeah. she's shaking her head at me. Now, when I say this, I love the body of Christ. I'm not. Sister Kathy comes from the Church of Christ Church. And I love the Church of Christ. I'm a unity guy. If you know the Lord Jesus, we're family. We're in the same kingdom, we're in the same city. Let's band together. Yes, we have our own assignments, but let's let's surround, let's get, I should know the pastor down the road. I know Pastor Jimmy Talley at the ministry center. I know Pastor Terry Evans at Grace Point. I, I know the elder. I have not met the pastor at the Presbyterian Church here, but I know the elder here. We should band together and fellowship with one another. Amen. But she came to our church. And she came, she's, she's on the Hickson High School booster team. So she was introduced to our church through us having the banquet here. But then one day she just dropped in on us. And I said, I went into the office, I said, there's somebody here from Hickson High School to my wife. We've done that banquet for eight years, no one's ever come. My gosh. She's right on the third row where Jade's sitting right now. Well, she came to one service. She came to another service. She came to a third service. I called her. This is what she said to me. Help me, correct me if I'm wrong. She said, you're a little charismatic. She was honest with me. In other words, interpretation, you're a little weird. You're different. But she said this. Here's the inward witness. I feel, com- I feel comfort there. That's the greatest. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. I'm no good. God's good. To God be the glory. I did a double. T- I did this in office. That's thoroughly scriptural because the Holy Spirit, he's the comforter. That means the Holy Spirit, even though it's different, is in the church. So she didn't receive, and hopefully you're going to keep attending. We'll see you next Sunday, right? This might not work if she's not here again. (laughs) But she didn't say, well, at 12 noon, if the bird flies by, then I need to go to that church. Or she didn't, she didn't have a dream or an or a angelic visitation. Now, we're, we can get to that. God does speak that way. But primarily, God doesn't speak that way. Primarily, God leads you by it seems good. This is right. I've prayed about it. I've submitted it to family. I've submitted it to counsel. If it's a huge, you know, big decision. But this just seems good. And that's how she's come to this church. Your spirit is the candle of the Lord. Proverbs 20, 27. And then Romans 8, 16 says, the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. He'll lead you from your heart. So we could say this, follow your heart. Now sometimes your head and your heart don't agree. And you can't make sense of a situation. Something's not right. With my head, everything, all the pieces are in place. But with my heart, it's like I'm taking a shower with my socks on. Something's not right. Well, just wait. That's called a red light. But then there's times where you're just, and nothing makes sense here, but on the inside, Maybe Sister Kathy can relate to this. Wow, that guy's crazy, but my head's saying one thing, but my heart's saying another. I go there, and there's something that happens. That's the inward witness. Hallelujah. That's the inward witness. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons and daughters of God. In other words, you're a son and daughter of God. And you're led. You're not led by a pastor. 
You're not led by a prophet. You're not led by an evangelist. You're not led by those things. Thank God for those offices, but you're led by the Lord. Otherwise, you'd always have to go to them and say, what's the Lord saying? And Jesus paid too high a price for you to have to run things through everybody. He wants to talk to you personally. You're his sheep and you know his voice. He paid too high a price for you to have to run things to people. Now, there's a place where we get counsel, right? Come on. But if I have to run to a ministry gift to get a word from the Lord, no, no, I'm missing it. I got a word from the Lord. And then I've got an inward witness. I got the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. And he knows the landscape of my life. He knows the layout. And I'm going to listen to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Let me qualify that a little further and we're going to close. Turn to um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Let's qualify this truth a little further, and then we'll bring this to a close. Have you been blessed this morning? Has it been worth your time? Praise God. To God be the glory. 1 Peter chapter 4. Basically, what we're going to see here is that the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. The Holy Spirit inspired Genesis to Revelation. That's what we're going to see here in some big words. 1 Peter 4 and 11. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said 1 Peter, I apologize. I'm looking at my third point. 2 Peter 1.20. I'm not going to be able to get to my third point. Because we need to go eat lunch. Can I get an amen? That's spiritual, isn't it? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 says this. Knowing this first. God wants you to know this. Knowing this first. That no prophecy or inspired utterance. Of the scripture. Scripture referring to the Bible is of any private interpretation. Knowing this first, that no inspired utterance or inspired words of the Scripture, the Scripture's inspired words, is of any private interpretation. For the utterance or the words came not in old time by the will of man or by God's design, or excuse me, by man's design, but God did use men Holy men of God, and as they spake, they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That simply means this, that from Genesis to Revelation, every jot, every tittle, tittle was, was written down, inspired by the Holy Spirit, but holy men wrote it. They call it a ghost writer. If someone writes your book, it's your story, but they actually penned it. So Jeremiah was inspired of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Genesis, all the Old Testament books were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And holy men were moved and wrote it down. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. So this, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Now, we're talking about being led or hearing God by an inward witness. We just validated that the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit through holy men of God. Can you say amen? Now I'm going to go real quickly to the Gospel of Luke and show you the inward witness. Go to Luke chapter 1. And we'll see the inward witness right here. We'll see that Luke heard from God by following his heart. If 
Thank you, Lord. Verse 1 says, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Watch this church, underline it. It seemed good unto me. There's the inward witness. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. How many believe that the gospel of Luke is inspired by the Holy Spirit? Or how many believe that Luke, which was a physician, heard from God and penned what he penned? Of course. Notice how he, was, how he heard from God. He said this. It seemed good to me. He didn't say God came to me in a dream. God can do that. He didn't say again the bird flew by at 12 noon and made the decision. He didn't say I went to the prophet and the prophet said pin this gospel. He said God spoke to me by it seemed good. That's the inward witness. I'm thankful for the gospel of Luke. But what I just showed us is that it was simplistic of how he heard from God to do what God told him to do. You have a seamer. Does it seem good? Be led by your seamer. Does it seem good or does it not seem good? Do you have peace or is there no peace? Do you have a green light or do you have a red light? That's the primary way God leads his body, just like he led Luke, the physician, to pin the gospel of Luke. It seemed good. Praise the Lord. When I've heard from God and, I, and I've missed God a lot, that, it's good to, say, to hear that. You can miss God. But the times I've hit it on the head, it seemed good. You have a seamer. It's your heart. The Holy Ghost will witness with your heart. And you can make decisions and hear from God based upon that. Now it'll line up with the Bible. It'll never seem good to rob a bank. You can't say, I heard from God it seemed good to rob First Tennessee Bank today. No, because the Holy Ghost talks Bible. It'll never seem good, and I don't know why I'm saying this, to split a church. It'll never seem good to divide a family. You'll never get a witness on the inside of you to create confusion. But you will get a witness on the inside of you to be a peacemaker. When your mind's saying you need to knock them in the head. But your seamer, your seamer saying something altogether different. Your head is saying, man, I'd, I'd get them back. I'd drive by them and give them a good hand gesture. But your seamer, it seemed good unto me also. That's how God led him. You can be led by God. You can hear from God. You're his daughter. A stranger's voice, it don't seem good. Something's not right. It's like taking a shower with your socks on. But then there's times, no, that seems good. That's God. And it agrees with the Bible. You're about to make the right decision. And God will be glorified. And you'll be happy because of the results. Is God speaking today? I know I went long. But this will help you tomorrow. Follow your heart. This will help you in that big decision you're about to make. Follow your seamer. Is God speaking today? Yes, he's speaking by his word. Is God speaking today? 
Yes, he's speaking by his spirit who wrote his word, who will bear witness in your heart to the word. But it doesn't say in the word, start a church January 7, 2007. That's when this church started. You're not going to find the King James Version. Michael Ryan Linden started church January 7th of 2007, Sunday morning. But there's a seamer. And you can be led by the Holy Spirit from your heart. Did you get anything today? Amen. Is God good? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let the, and I got, now. Don't let the enemy tell you you can't hear from God. Brother Glenn, you can hear God just as clear as I can. You're a son just as much as I am. I don't have the ear of God on a, like on a, a greater way, way. But how many times have we thought that? So and so, man, they can really get in contact with God. You can get in contact with God. Jesus paid too high a price for one person to have that access alone. Sir, you can hear from God just as, as clear as anyone. Jesus paid too high a price for us not to hear from him. You're his sheep. You know his voice. What's he saying to you? Do it. Do it. It doesn't make sense to your mind. But it seems good. This seems right. That's the primary way the Lord will lead you. Now, if you get a dream tonight, I can count on my hand how many God dreams I've had. That I woke up and went, I better not do that. I woke up from a dream and I was about to make a decision in, in a pertaining to a relationship. And the Lord showed me in the dream her heart and said, this person is not where you're at and not going where you're going in the relationship. I said, how dare you, you tell me that. But I obeyed. Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Watch this. I didn't meet her till like 10, 11 years later. And you know how I met her? My pastor said, if I'm two hours away and I'm holding a meeting and I'm two hours away from Chattanooga, this is another way God will speak to you. It's through his church. It's through his body. He said, I expect you to be in that meeting. And the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost, Michael, will use me to speak into your life, and you'll get a supply. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, that night, we had just, that weekend, we had just entered our marriage conference. I dropped the guest minister off in Atlanta. I wanted to go home. Pastor Mark was in. Moulton, Alabama. I pulled into the Taco Bell 1010 in Moulton. Shaved in a, the Taco Bell restroom. That day we, we wore suits to every church. I put my suit on, put my tie on. I walked into the church. Got on the front row because I called before and I said, I'm coming. They said, oh, you know, Pastor Mark, we want to, I didn't ask, I'll sit in the back. I'll sit in the hallway. I don't need all that. But we'll move you up to the front. Okay, I was sitting on the front and to my left. I said, glory be to God. <laughs> it seems good. <laughs> this seems real good. Isn't that amazing that God will lead you by it seems good? Everyone in here can be led by God, can hear from God. That seems right. Yeah, let's do that. Well, church started. Man, they had, you talk about a charismatic church, sister. They had a praise and worship leader. He looked like Michael Jackson up there. I started watching him. I forgot all about it. Seems good over here. 
I was like, I thought our church was wild. This church is real wild. You know what? By the time the sermon came, and I, I went long, I apologize. By the time the sermon came, I, I, I remembered the scene good. I looked over to my left, and this is what I saw, church. The first thing I saw was that I was attracted to my wife physically. But the second thing I saw, she was on the edge of her seat with her Bible like this. And I said, oh, the natural and the supernatural coming together. There's going to be an explosion. You know what? We didn't meet that night. Two days later, we met. We went on our first date that Friday night. I proposed a month later. I didn't get an angelic visitation. I didn't get a dream. I didn't throw out a, if this happens, what's that called? A fleece. I didn't fleece God. And God blessed me. And this woman, she's better than I am. I'm selfish. I'm immature. But my wife, she puts up with me. I'm thankful for her.